CNN. Tonight, CNN Learning law enforcement officials are actively interviewing witnesses to build their case against Sean Diddy Combs. Those witnesses are people described in the multiple civil lawsuits against Diddy as being present or having material knowledge of the crimes alleged against him. And that's not all. We have dramatic new video tonight of the raid on Diddy's L.A. home. That video posted by Misa Hilton, the mother of one of Diddy's sons, Justin Combs. You can see him there with his hands up in a hallway with guns pointed at him. The video edited to circle what Hilton says are laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest. Hilton saying, quote, if these were the sons of a non-black celebrity, they would not have been handled with the same aggression. She goes on to say, how many times have we seen young unarmed black men not make it out of these types of situations alive? Hilton also saying that she has retained an attorney to investigate what she is calling an excessive use of force. I want to get right to John Miller, CNN's chief law enforcement and intelligence analyst. He served as the deputy commissioner of intelligence and counterterrorism at the NYPD. Also joining me is Nima Ramani, the president of West Coast Trial Lawyers. He's also a former federal prosecutor. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining me this evening. Let me begin with you, John, because you've got some new reporting. I understand that officials are in the process of interviewing witnesses. Who are the witnesses and what about? Well, this investigation is based on two successful models that Homeland Security Investigation has used before. One, of course, is the R. Kelly case, which was brought uh, to the federal courts as a racketeering case in the Eastern District of New York, Brooklyn Federal Court, where he was convicted um, and sent away for 30 years. And that was a case that started with agents reviewing claims that were made in civil suits, finding those plaintiffs, finding people who were present during the things that occurred, interviewing them, in some cases giving them grand jury subpoenas, and basically recreating the civil cases uh, as criminal investigations where they gathered that evidence and presented them in court to a jury. So in this case, they're going down the same route. Yeah, I do wonder which came first. And are you building your case on a parallel track or is one prompting the other? It sounds like perhaps the catalyst might be the civil litigation, so far as we know. Nima, let me bring you in here, because there are a number of lawsuits that are surrounding Diddy, and so far we know that he has settled at least one with Cassie Ventura. If there is a criminal investigation into Diddy, though, if there is an NDA in that settlement, which I assume there would be one, she could still be compelled to cooperate with investigators, right? Laura, that's absolutely right. An NDA can't prevent a victim from reporting a crime to law enforcement. And Congress passed a law last year that actually invalidates NDAs related to sexual assault and harassment. So Diddy can't use an NDA to silence the victims in this case, whether it's inside the courtroom or outside. Well, that's really helpful for investigators if they're compelling someone to actually testify. I mean, we also saw earlier the video, John, uh, that was posted by Misa Hilton, one of the, the mother of one of his sons, of the raid. Um, it's scary to watch to see what took place. And the point that she's making about these encounters is certainly not lost on me. Even though everyone was ultimately safe, at least physically, there is a lot that could have gone wrong. And people are wondering why there was such a presence of force applied in this way in the sense of the presence of law enforcement. Did that strike you as odd? Well, based on the allegations that were being investigated, and I think it's a good time here to say uh, both Sean Combs through his attorneys have denied all of those allegations, uh, as has his son, Justin, who is named in another one of the lawsuits and who is seen here being confronted by armed federal agents from Homeland Security. But if you read the narratives in the civil cases, which are part of this investigation, uh, particularly in the Rodney Jones investigation, you hear him talking about um, Sean Combs allegedly going to closets in the home in Miami and in Los Angeles and handing out weapons to people who were either private security or part of his entourage, in one case, allegedly gang members. In the Cassie Ventura lawsuit, uh, she uh, filed under oath that Mr. Combs had her carry his pistol wherever they went together in her purse. Again, all things that, uh, that Combs has denied. But when you're hitting a large property like this that has cameras that can see you coming from a mile away, that can monitor your movements inside, 
where you have reports of guns being stored there and, and guns being carried there by people, uh, your tactical plan is probably going to include a show of force which has a tactical advantage in case you face gunfire, and we've seen that before, um, and at least a psychological advantage when you're trying to uh, conduct a raid with the element of speed and surprise so evidence isn't destroyed and that so you don't meet resistance. In this case, none of that happened, uh, but you can certainly understand um, a mother's feeling uh, watching this video that that's a traumatic experience for anyone. Really quick on that point, John, as well, when they were applying for a warrant, obviously it's a probable cause standard that they believe that there, there's likely going to be evidence of a crime located in a particular area. As part of that tactical plan then to execute that search warrant, there would have been planning surrounding how they would have used force or the number of officers present, right? Right. And I mean, there's a lot unusual about this warrant. You know, usually, as you know, as a former federal prosecutor, these warrants are set to go at six o'clock in the morning um, or later. This happens in the middle of the afternoon, but that's because at that time there was a lot of movement. Was he in Miami? Was he in California? Was he headed to the airport? Was his private plane waiting? Um, as we know, he was stopped at the airport and an individual who was um, named as someone who allegedly carries a weapon and drugs for him was arrested at the airport allegedly with drugs. So um, they were moving very swiftly to make sure that they were able to get the evidence they believed they would find there. Well, Swift is a question I have, um, Nima, on this point in terms of what you think ultimately might occur. I mean, obviously, it's, there's been no alleg there's no, been no criminal charges against Diddy at all. Um, there's been no criminal charges. He has denied everything. Based on what you're seeing and using your, your expertise as a former prosecutor, what's a timeline that you're expecting to see from here? Laura, I expect an indictment in a matter of days or weeks. You know, federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York, they don't go to a judge and get a search warrant for two residences unless they are close to an indictment. This is the final step of an investigation. I believe that they've interviewed the witnesses, either proffers at the U.S. Attorney's Office or potential grand jury testimony. And this is just the final step of the investigation. They're looking for the videos that Diddy allegedly recorded of the sex acts. We know that there appears to be hidden cameras in the homes that may have captured these alleged acts. Once those HSI agents review the video, I expect that grand jury indictment to be unsealed and Diddy or others to be arrested. Well, if that is indeed the case, it, it'll be more than the, the mother of one child who's retaining counsel for that effect. John Miller, Nima Romani, thank you both so much.